Welcome to Guns 101, our welcome video message for new gun owners. It's brought to you by the Self-Defense Radio Network. I'm Rob Morse from Self-Defense Gun Stories. My partners are Charlie Cook from Riding Shotgun with Charlie and the guy behind the curtain there doing the heavy technical lifting. That's Paul Lathrop from the Polite Society podcast. We have Annette Evans with us. She's Beauty Behind the Blast and her Facebook page on her own. Annette, a lot of people said, I feel scared. I need a gun. There's a lot that goes on between those two statements. How do we make that uh, connection real? There, there is a lot there. Um, I think that guns are a really, really important part of self-defense because when we need a gun, pretty much nothing else will do, right? It is the great equalizer. It is the tool that allows us to stop the bad guys um, when we don't have physical advantages, when we don't have strength advantages, when we may not have surprise advantages. And I get it. Guns are comforting in a way. They're scary, but they're comforting. And we know that we want the best tools to protect ourselves, to protect our families. So welcome. Um, I am glad to see so many new gun owners out there. But I think it's really important to remember that now that you have a gun, that's not the end of the story. Just having a gun isn't magic. Having it in the house isn't something that's going to make uh, home invaders or robbers just go, I'm going to slip, I'm going to skip over your house now. You know, it, it's too scary there. Just like showing somebody your gun isn't enough to make them go, oh, you know, this is too much work. It might be, but you can't rely on that. And it's really important to know that you might actually have to shoot somebody. You might actually have to kill somebody. And maybe that's for you. Maybe that's not for you. But it's something that now that you own a gun, you need to think about. A gun, having a gun in the house for home defense is, uh, you make a great point and say it's its not magic. It doesn't happen. I've talked to a number of students that have said they, they want to get their gun license. They want to buy a gun. They don't plan on ever shooting it. Uh, that makes me a little bit nervous. Uh, yeah. Do you have students that, it does. does. Do you have students that ask you that? Yeah, I have students, I even have friends who have said, hey, I've got this gun now, and if I need to use it, then I'm going to go get it out, and I'm going to, I don't know what they think they're going to do, you know. Um, using a gun, is, it's a mechanical object just like any other tool, and the only way you're going to effectively be able to use it is if you practice. You, you know, you're not going to magically know how to use it when the time comes. You're going to look at this thing and go, well, I hope I hope this scares somebody off because I don't know what else to do with it. You're not going to magically know how to load it. You're not going to magically know how to shoot it. You're not going to magically know how to make the scary noises like racking the slide or pumping the pump on a shotgun or if you don't practice how to use your gun. Just having it in the house is, it's like burying a state in your yard. It's not really going to do a whole lot probably certainly you can't rely on that as your last line of defense annette i want to jump in here if i could um the one other thing i i, I want very similar to this and i hear a lot of new people say it is well i was in fear for my life that'll take care of me if i ever need to use my gun and that's not necessarily the case no there are no magic words at law um, I, I'm, I'm actually a lawyer in real life for my day job, and there's no magic words that we can say that we can guarantee an outcome for. Everything depends on the actual facts of what you're doing, and it depends on the law where you are, and this is even the politics where you are. So you can't just go, they were in the house, or I was in fear for my life, and certainly don't do something like, well, if, as long as I drag the body inside, it'll be okay. These are all bad ideas. Okay, these are, these are things that we have this idea that, oh, well, if I just say that it's okay because then it becomes self-defense. Self-defense, it, it, it's, it's what we call an affirmative defense. You still killed somebody. And now you're just trying to say, but it was okay that I did. And that's a really complicated thing to do. One of the things that you need to do as a new gun owner, as somebody who's interested in self-defense, is learn the law for your area. 
Um, there are lots of resources online. Some of them are even good. Uh, there's local attorneys that you might want to talk to, but it's not just a matter of saying magical words and hoping that they work. It's just like having a gun in your house is not magic. Saying things aren't magic when the cops show up. I've had a lot of students ask me and say they've talked to a friend of theirs who who said if they shoot someone outside their house, they should drag them back in. And I always say that um, I, I don't watch CSI, but I'm pretty sure that's tampering with evidence. They're going to be able to tell that you did that. <laughs> right. We, we've all watched CSI, even the cops. There's, there's a lot of bad things, uh, not bad things, there are a lot of things that are not true that people see in television and on movies that they they think that having a gun is going to protect them and putting a gun in the drawer does make them much safer because if someone breaks in their house and their gun's on the second floor, they're magically, quickly, easily going to get upstairs, get the gun and shoot the bad guy. And it's we know that's just not true. Ooh. No, we, we would like to believe that it's true. And I wish it were true for a lot of people. You know, I want people to be safe. I want them to be able to protect themselves. But you have to do a little bit of the work on your end, whether that's learning how to use your new gun, uh, safely storing it somewhere that you can actually access it, learning how if you're going to carry your gun on your body, learning how to actually get it out of a holster so that you can actually shoot somebody if you need to, and then being able to protect yourself in the aftermath, which is to say, when the cops show up and there's a dead body in your house, what are you going to do to make sure that you don't go to jail for it? We know that you are the good guy, that you're protecting yourself, but the law can be a sticky thing. So it's important to make sure that we're doing what we can to make sure that we can go through that process well as well. Are there some training and practice uh, practice programs that someone could do? I mean, after after someone buys a gun, then they think they're all safe, but we all know that they need to get some training. And how much how much practice should someone do with, uh, with drawing the gun out and learning how to shoot before they're probably comfortable having a gun or you keeping a gun and, and realizing that they're going to be able to protect themselves with it? Well, on one hand, I'm a person who, you know, I say do the work. That's in fact what my shirt said today. I think you can go crazy on it and spend hours every day and do this five, seven days a week. But in reality, a couple of minutes, give me five, maybe 10 minutes a day, two, three, four days a week max. And you can know enough going from, I just bought a gun and I don't know how to do this to, well, I'm at least pretty comfortable with how to hold the gun, how to manipulate everything on my gun, and how to get my gun out of where I keep it, whether it's in a safe or in a holster on my body, and use it safely. Um, dry fire, dry practice, I've actually written a book about it called the Dry Fire Primer. Um, you can do some Skype or um, video lessons with somebody to teach you, walk you through how to use your gun. And then you can do that practice just a few minutes every day or a few minutes a few times a week. It's not gonna take you a whole lot to get to a level of familiarity where it's not foreign to you. It might not be the most familiar thing in the world to you, and that's gonna take a little bit more work, but to get to the point where you go, huh, I can do this and I can do this under some level of stress, just give me five minutes, 10 minutes a day, two, three, four days a week. Excellent. So it doesn't take too much work after you've bought a gun to to get yourself up and proficient enough to be able to um, to shoot and use a gun defensively. That's great. Listen, this has been a lot of great information from you, Annette. Thank you very much. Um, this is Charlie Cook from Writing Shotgun with Charlie. We have Rob Morse. Uh, sorry, Rob. Yeah, Rob Morse from Self Defense Gun Stories and Paul Lather from the Polite Society Podcast. We have shows on the Self Defense Radio Network. You can find all of our shows and a number of others at sdrn.us. Please check out some of the other videos on the Polite Society Podcast YouTube page. We're doing a series of videos for new gun owners because we have somewhere around two and a half million gun owners that are new here in, in the United States. And we want to thank Annette Evans for being on the show with us. Thank you very much. Thank you.